No. Is he okay? He's not too well. He's what happened? happened? Are you okay? I'm in shock. I'm in shock. I came over to the apartment every Monday like I do, and he didn't answer the door. So I came in, I yelled out Russ, he still didn't answer. So I saw him in, in his bedroom, and he was laying on the bed and he was vomiting the pills all over the place. Was he in pain? He was unconscious. So I called the 911. They came pretty quick. And I said, okay, I'll just call you and come down to the hospital here. I don't understand how this could happen. You know, apparently they called his therapist too, which I didn't even know he was seeing anybody. I don't know either. What therapist? I don't know. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe this is happening. Frank. This is a nightmare. Oh my God, what are we going to do? He yeah. has to be okay. Excuse me, are you here for, for us? Yes. Okay, one second. Let's be the therapist. I'm Dr. Miller. Frank Kelly, his agent manager. Mary. Dr. Miller. Russ has been coming to see me for a number of years. And they called me to come down here when he was struck. I didn't know he was seeing anybody. Neither did I. It's nicely enough. It's just something he needed for stress. He's in a very tight business, you know. A lot of stars. Did you see any signs of this? No, not at all. Well, geez. A few things that we should probably agree on is that uh, since Russ is in the media, we should make sure that this doesn't get to the newspapers, television. Trust me, Doc, it's well, not getting out. That is not the thing we're thinking about right now. But it's not getting out. But it shouldn't. It won't. How many years have you seen him? A number of years. How come he never said anything to me about that? You have to ask him when he comes out of it. Right now, all I can tell you unofficially is that they're pumping his stomach. They believe it might have been a, an overdose. And once he regains consciousness, they'll speak to him. In the meantime, the love and do is it. Wait, they'll let us know when everything is. This is unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. Well, it's real. I didn't, um, I saw him this morning in my office, but when was the last time any of you saw him? And was there any signs that this could happen? I, I saw him last week. Okay. <coughs> what time? You know, Russ has had some money problems for a while. Oh. And, uh, you know, he hasn't been hitting out of the park the last couple of years of his career. I mean, it's unfortunate, but things happen that way. So, I called him, and it's been hard to get a hold of him. He's kind of been distant. Mm -hmm. But I find him, pinned him down, and he's playing this off-off-Broadway show downtown somewhere. So I said to him, listen, we got to meet. So I finally set the appointment for met him. Did anything happen at this meeting that might have triggered this? There were some things. Triggers. There were some things. So I, like I said, I called him. I finally got him on the phone. He said, meet me down at the theater, and that's what I did. Okay. So what happened when you did that? So, hey, hey, Russ, how are you? How you doing? I hate to say, this is some freaking dump. Yeah. Hey, thanks for reminding me. Oh, my God. Hey, wait, I got to be back in a few minutes. I got a little break. What do you want? What do you, you need? You've been talking to me for a while. Man. You know, you asked me to take that $250,000 out of the bank again. And this is the third time in 10 months you want me to do this. I have no idea where the money's going. It's my money, Frank. I can do what I want when I can. It's your money, Russ. But you know you haven't been making big money in the last two years. The account's going down. You can't afford to do this. Am I broke? You're not broke. But I got some ideas. You're playing the ponies again, right? Nah. No. Frank, come on. You're sniffing? You look at me. I know. I'm and you're losing weight, pal. Something's going on. Hey, sweetheart, how are you? Yeah. Nice to see you. Really? <laughs> you gotta tell me what's going on, okay? You have to. Do you remember the accident she with the Rodriguez woman? Yes, yeah, shh, shh. Don't talk about that anymore. Keep it down. Frank, I mean, it happened. I 
know what happened when we agreed not to talk about it anymore. We took care of it. I appreciate everything you did. I appreciate you took care of it. I know it wasn't my fault, but I'm just thinking about it. The kid is alone, doesn't have a mother. He's living with the grandmother. So I just felt like I should do something. We took care of it, though. Listen. She was in the country illegally. She crossed what against the law. do with anything? We took care of it. It's done. It's over. It's, it's over. Okay, fine. But but this is this is me. It's not. It has nothing to do with what you did before. I appreciate what you did before, but that's it. You right? Know, no. You know why? Why? Because you're giving away money, and my damn rent check is just bounced. Okay? Because I've made a commission off you in a year and a half, and you're giving away money. Think of me. I didn't know you were. Part up, Frank. But Jesus. when I was working, you got your share. You got more than your share, right? But it's, so, it's, I mean, it's gone. It's gone. I mean, you know, the lifestyle is tough. You know that. Listen, I'm worried about you. I am. Nah, don't worry about me. It's fine. Listen, take a couple of these, okay? Just for a few days, you'll feel real good and you'll be ready. You'll be ready to get out of this dump. What are these? They did some good pills. Don't worry about it, okay? And listen, you've got to be ready in a couple of weeks. I got the audition for you with Spielberg, so you better be ready for it. Spielberg? Yes. You must have pulled some strings for that. Listen, the less you know about that, the better. But just be ready, okay? Yeah, Frank. Hey, sweetie, do you need an agent? <laughs> Frank. I'm oh, sorry, I'm oh, sorry. Listen, take care of yourself, all right? Take it easy, Frank. So, that's how the conversation went. The accident happened about 15 years ago, okay? I mean, it really wasn't Russ's fault. He was at a party, but he wasn't drunk. He was not drunk. And she, this woman came out of the, from nowhere and he hit her. Oh, my God. She died and the kid was in the foster home. Oh, my God. That would have killed him. Not right there. It... But he hasn't brought this up since that him? time. And who knows about this? Nobody. Just it's going to stay that way. The media doesn't know about this. We <coughs> took care of it. It's done. All right, I'm sure. That must have killed him, the guilt. It that sounded to me like you were really more about yourself and the money. What were you so interested in his money? It was his money enough? What are you, a prosecutor? Why are we listening to you? I'm asking you a question. That's all. Why were you so interested in what he was doing with his money? I'm his manager. I have to watch his money. His okay. money? Yes. And when it goes down, I have to know why. He's all okay? right. No, just yes, I do. Real. You think pressure in him like that? I'm sorry? You think pressure in him like that? There was no pressure. What? There was no what pressure. What are you talking about? You're the freaking doctor. You're his shrink. Shouldn't you know whether he's there? I'm not understanding. Um, I don't know why he didn't tell me this, Frank. I wish he had told me a long time ago. I mean, I would have been there for him. We, we would have found a way to... We just wanted to keep it on the down low. Well. He's never said anything to me before about it. So I thought he was gone. I know he poured guilt again. Uh, Mary, did you see him recently? I see him every Sunday night, so of course I saw him last night. Okay, anything going on there? Can we uh, take this into action? It wasn't good. It wasn't good. This is a nightmare. Oh, it's a nightmare. Um, Yeah. You yeah. sure? Sure. 
I brought you food. I yeah. got, yeah, I have one of those casseroles that uh, <laughs> I have to kind of eat, you know, what with kind? the salmon and all the veggies. Mm -hmm. You know, I put a lot of cheese on it. You'll eat it. Mm -hmm. How do you want this thing? You put cheese on salmon? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I knew you would eat it then. Yeah. You're looking so good. <laughs>
Maybe that'll chew you up. Happy pills. Yeah. Is that the clinical name? <laughs>
It's about that. How is the soul that? It's about that too. <laughs> too. Well, I don't Jesus how else, Christ, Barry. How else am I supposed to approach you? You don't care about your family. You don't care about your career. You don't so care about your life. But well, why don't you at least care about my record? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You're right. I should be concerned about your record. You know what, Barry? Why are you I, I, I was a little confused when I came in, but I'm not anymore. Barry? See you Goodbye. Around. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. See ya. And like I said... Can you tell me how he was when he left? Yeah, he was fine. He was happy. We made plans to go out for dinner. Maybe play golf. Why? I don't know about So I don't actually... Ross doesn't know. golf. <laughs> you didn't know he had cancer. What are you trying to say? I don't know he didn't play golf. Come on, Doc. What are you saying? <laughs> That's a little far-fetched, isn't it? Right. Okay. And you can't tell us any more than that? I can't tell you, and I won't tell you. Well, good. Why are you here? Could you well, just because they called me here. Okay? Are they, are Why are you here? Any it's his sister, for God's sakes. Who, who obviously he can confide a lot in. I'm going to go find out what I can and see what they'll tell me. Come back quick. Okay. I can't spend another minute with this. I hate to say it, I don't really know you, but you haven't been much help at all. I'm not here to help you. No, I'm saying I'm not here to help you. I'm here because Russ is in there. Yeah. And they call me. Hide behind everything. The poor guy, half dead, and you can't say anything. I believe you didn't say anything about that accident for 15 years. And Russ had that on his shoulders for 15 years. Huh? How different are we? Except that I'm restricted by law. You're not. All right, Doc, I'll give you that one, okay? Maybe I was wrong. I think you were wrong. Because he's been sitting on this thing, and then you go and Pressure about the money. He's an actor. A damn good actor, too. Yeah, and, and you should understand how sensitive they are, their egos, their... Look, he did, he did great early on, right? He did tremendous. And I want him to get back to that part, okay? And he will, and he will. See, I can still remember his first breakout movie. I don't know if you saw it. It was Hollywood on the Rocks. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it even before I was counseling him. He played that mobster with the big, bushy mustache. He was hysterical. He was so funny. He was. He was hysterical. There was a line in that movie. I forget what it was now, but it was a really kind of How a catch you forget that line? Okay, how did you forget that line? What happened was that he was a, the mobster. He was yeah. going with his partner. Right, he right. He walked into this dark warehouse, and the partner was complaining about Jock Gage the entire movie. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> so they go into this warehouse. Huh? Right, and now and it's, it's coming quiet, back. It's quiet, it's quiet, and you hear scratching noises. <laughs> right? You hear scratching noises, and, the, and, the, uh, and all of a sudden you hear Russ say, uh, excuse me, those are my balls you're scratching. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> that was funny. But that wasn't the funny part. The funny part was that I remember about a day later, two days later, I was in a store. And I, I was looking all around, and one person actually in fact, picked up the package that belonged to somebody else. Yeah. So the guy says, excuse me, those are my balls. It's, it's like everybody was using it, you know? <laughs> he was so proud of that movie because it was the first breakout. He wanted to throw a big party for everybody. So the whole cast and crew, and he says, you know, I don't want to do this formal thing. Make it something different. So I go down the lower side and find the strip club, right? So I kind of ran down the whole place for the night. And the whole crew was there, there was girls there, there was booze flying, everything was great. All of a sudden, about 11 o'clock, what happens? The place gets raided. The cops come flying in, right? So we grab Russ. He's got two blinds on his head. He's smoking a stogie. And I shoot right down to the freezer. And he's down there for about 15 minutes. He's having a ball. And the fight of the cops, they don't find him. And he tells that story, and he keeps laughing about it all the time. It was so funny with the strippers. <laughs> What they say, Mary? He's in a coma. 
They said we could go see him one at a time. my good buddy. It's killing me to see you like this. You've been the rock to everybody, including myself. If I wanted to give up, then I don't have a vocabulary. But I see you now and you have given up. Like life isn't important to you. But it is. It is, Russ. Come back, buddy, please. I love you, man. I came out of the uh, coma in three days. There were a lot of questions, but uh, like good friends, Barry and Frank convinced the doctors that uh, I wasn't suicidal, that it was an accidental overdose. I had to stay in the hospital for a few more days. Mary stayed with me every day. She fed me soup and salmon casserole. <laughs> But finally got out. They tried to convince me to take treatment, but uh, I'd have none of that. One month later, I died, not from cancer. Turns out I had an undiagnosed heart defect. Who knew? Yeah, one month. But it was a good month. I spent every day with Mary, and we enjoyed every minute of it. I uh, reconciled with Barry, and I laughed with Frank. And it was a good month. The night before I died, we all met for dinner. We, uh, we laughed, and we cried, and we told stories, and we toasted to life. And I got to say goodbye. And in the end, I got to leave on my own terms. 